Good morning all. How do you remove the chuck from an electric drill? I just want to take this bit off the drill's shaft. So how's it done? So this is my top quality Tesco electric drill. 9.6 volts. It's got a nickel cadmium battery pack, which is completely flat. So the first thing to do is to withdraw the jaws of the chuck. So let's spin them back into the chuck. This is a two part uh, chuck. You lock, lock one half against the other half. Most modern drills have a single part chuck. So let's have a look down inside here. And yes, there's a screw. It's a cross point. So it's either a Phillips or a posi drive. So take your Phillips or posi drive. I think this is a posi drive screwdriver. Locate it in the head of the screw and undo it. Now here's the trick. You don't undo it counterclockwise because this is a left hand threaded screw. So you undo it clockwise, which is counterintuitive and feels completely wrong. But that's how you do it. And if I can get the screw out. Yeah, there it is. There's the screw. Let's have a closer look at that. So here's the screw and the thread just looks a bit odd. And that's because it's a left handed thread. So on a normal thread, the lines there would run up to the right. On this one, they run up to the left. So this is a left handed thread. And to undo it, you have to turn it clockwise. Now this is used for a particular reason. And I'll come back to that. But let's now take the chuck off the drills motor shaft. Now on this drill, that's going to be easy because this is not particularly tight on the shaft. I can just jerk it undone. And this unscrews on quite a large diameter thread there on this shaft. Doesn't come directly from the motor, it comes via the gearbox. But yeah, that's how to take the chuck off an electric drill. Now it's likely if you try this that the chuck will be very tight on the drill's output shaft and you may need to clamp something like uh, this Allen wrench into the end of the chuck and whack it a few times with a hammer. This drill makes it particularly difficult to uh, take the chuck off wall if that were tight because if I put that back on, there's no braking or locking mechanism on the uh, motor shaft. So if I turn that, it just turns the motor. Almost all modern drills now have a locking mechanism so if you turn the one piece chuck, the motor will lock up and you can get that off if it's loose enough to do it by hand. So that's how you get the chuck off the electric drill shaft. You take the screw out in the opposite direction to which you're familiar and you undo the chuck from the threaded shaft on the drill. But I was interested in why they use a left handed thread for this screw. Now intuitively, I can kind of understand that it's something to do with locking this chuck on the shaft because this could, if you uh, have a very powerful drill, just undo and come off the shaft of the drill. But I couldn't quite get in my head how this locking arrangement works. I couldn't see it visually. So in order to try and understand this, I'm gonna put this piece of threaded rod, which is gonna be a substitute for that screw. Now, of course, this is a right-hand thread, so it's certainly not gonna go into the thread inside the end of this shaft, which is where that screw goes. But it should hopefully help to explain what's going on with that left-handed thread. So I've locked this threaded rod into the jaws of the uh, chuck, not particularly tight. Now imagine that uh, I'm going to screw, oh, it actually does go in there because it's a smaller diameter than that screw, so that's good. So imagine I'm going to screw that threaded rod into the thread on the inside of this shaft. Now, of course it won't work because this is a right-hand thread and the thread inside there is a left-hand thread, but I can pretend it's screwing in by just doing this. Now let's imagine that the pitch of this thread on this screw, I'm just simulating that screw being locked to the chuck, is the same pitch as the thread on the outside of that shaft. And as this goes further and further in, so the outer shaft locks in and also screws onto that shaft. Now you can imagine both threads are threading onto that shaft simultaneously. This one is threading into the inside 
and the chuck is threading onto the outside. Now that means that when this is fully tightened onto that shaft, let's do that, both threads are in that shaft, one on the inside, one on the outside. They went in together, but that of course means that they can come out together. So if your drill is in reverse, say you're unscrewing a screw from a piece of wood, your chuck could come away with both threads undoing simultaneously the external thread. And when this comes off, the internal thread at the same time and both in the same direction. That's why they use a left-handed thread on the inner screw so that if this chuck tries to come undone from the outer shaft, the inner bolt is actually tightening up. And there's a very good reason for using a standard right-hand thread on this output uh, shaft, on the outside of this shaft, and the left-hand thread on the inside, not the other way around. And that is because when you're drilling, you're only ever rotating the shaft clockwise, as seen from the back of the drill. So that tends to pull the chuck onto that shaft. It's only when you're unscrewing screws that you'll get the opposite force and that this chuck could actually rotate off that shaft. And it's this locking screw with its left-handed thread that stops that happening. It's not going to happen while drilling, but it might happen when unscrewing. And so with the chuck tightened up on that shaft, I now put the screw back in the end of the chuck. And of course, counterintuitively, I have to rotate the screwdriver counterclockwise to get that screw to tighten up. And so that's how you remove the chuck from an electric drill and why the screw that holds the chuck on has a reverse thread. Cheerio.